Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've had a whole bunch of people send me a link to a story that's been going around the internet right now, and uh, it's stupid. And I wasn't going to respond to it. I, I write back to people and say, I'm, you know, I, I explain to them what's going on. But unfortunately, I keep getting these emails saying, Steve, have you seen this? Do a video about this. Do a video about this. And I wasn't going to do a video about it because it's stupid. It's stupid. But I thought, well, you know something, I think I should do a video. If nothing else, it'll help me perhaps stem the tide of all the emails I've been getting telling me to watch this thing. And so what it is, is a guy talking on a TikTok or a, a YouTube short. I'm not even sure what it is. I did watch to make sure I knew what was going on. But um, it's a guy talking and he says, hey, this is a true story. This is a true story. There was an attorney who bought a box of extremely expensive cigars and he had them insured. He had them insured and then he smoked them all. And, and then after he smoked them all, he filed a claim with his insurance company saying that he lost them in a series of small fires. And the insurance company said, no, we're not going to pay you for cigars that you burned yourself. And he filed a claim and they wouldn't pay it. So then he sued them and a court said, no, you got to pay him. The insurance policy says you got to pay him. So they figured something out. They paid him, and then they, and here's the quote, they had him arrested for arson because he had intentionally burned insured property. See, that's, that's the kicker here. The, the, the attorney thought he got one over the insurance company, but they got one over on him. Now, just so you know, the story's not true. First of all, it's not true. It's a joke. It's actually a joke. I remember first hearing the joke over 30 years ago. The reason I can place it in time is a friend of mine told me that story when I told him I wanted to go to law school. And he actually said, Steve, i got a funny lawyer story for you. And he told me that story, and I go, dude, that sounds like an urban legend. That cannot be true. And he said, no, I don't know. I, don't know. I, just, I remember hearing it. I remember hearing it. And I've seen this story in print a bunch of times. I've seen people repeat it. But it's clearly a joke. It's not true. It is not true. So I went online, just quickly did a brief search on this to find out how far back it could be traced, if in fact it could be traced. And I found an interesting story, I believe it's from The Guardian, which is the British newspaper, uh, in an article written in 2002. 2002. So this, this article is 21 years old. And it says, the strange and untrue case of the lawyer convicted of arson for smoking his own cigars. And he says, here's the story going the rounds in America and all over the internet, a lawyer in Charlotte, North Carolina. See, it's always going to be put someplace. It happened in Charlotte, North Carolina. That makes it true bought a box of very rare and expensive cigars and insured them against fire. A month later, after smoking them, he filed a claim against the insurance company, claiming the cigars had been destroyed in a, a series of small fires. Naturally, the company refused to pay, but the lawyer sued and won. The judge concluded that the way the policy was worded, the insurance company was liable. It had failed to limit its liability by defining what would amount to an unacceptable fire. As if insurance policies define acceptable fires versus unacceptable fires. Uh, I've never seen a policy that says we'll cover you for loss from fire unless it is an unacceptable fire. What? <laughs> the company, rather than incur the cost of appeal, paid $15,000, whereupon it reported the lawyer to the police and he was arrested and subsequently convicted on 24 counts of arson intentionally burning insured property and sentenced to two years imprisonment and a fine. This is a true story, the report says, and was the first place winner in the recent Criminal Lawyers Award contest. So the author of this article says, very funny, but hang on, why do I already know this story? If it won a recent contest, how come I remember it from way back? And this is the author here saying he remembers it from way back. What is this Criminal Lawyers Award contest? So he went out the internet and could not ever find such a thing or the alleged contest or its organizers. And he says, but the story, of course, makes no sense. It isn't legal, uh, legally possible. And there is that problem. There is that problem. So let's discuss this joke that's been going around for over 30 years. Uh, first of all, arson. Arson. To be convicted of arson. Um, well, let's look up a definition of arson. Willful or malicious burning or attempting to burn with or without intended fraud, a dwelling house, public house, motor vehicle, or aircraft, personal property of another. These were his own cigars. He can burn them all day long. That's not arson. But Steve was insured property. Yeah, pretty much everything you do own is insured. You can still burn it. I burn firewood all the time that I own. And yet, I have insurance on my property against fire. 
Do you think the insurance company could go, hey, hey, hey police, police, he's burning his own property, arrest him. Because remember, he wasn't arrested for insurance fraud. He was supposedly arrested for arson, okay? So the property of another. Obviously, you can burn your own stuff all day long. Now, obviously, you burned your own house down and tried to file an insurance claim on that, they'd get you for that because that would be an intentional act that you're doing, trying to defraud somebody through the burning down of your own property, okay? But the point is that smoking those cigars would not have been arson, whether or not he was trying to commit insurance fraud. A better argument would be that it's insurance fraud, that he burned them and then said, I want you to pay me for this. But there's a couple other problems, and they, they claim that he was arrested for intentionally burning insured property. Is that, is that actually what the crime reads in the books? If the property's not insured, you can burn it, but if it is insured, you can't? So then the insurance company had him arrested. Does the insurance company actually have prosecutorial powers? I mean, I know sometimes it feels like they do, but they don't. So the insurance company had him arrested. And by the way, everybody goes, true story. It's a true story. It's a true story. It's a joke, people. Come on. And by the way, according to the true story, the guy insures his cigars against fire. Uh, can I talk to the agent who wrote that policy? Can... <laughs> I mean, I realize that like, Lloyd's of London is famous for having insurance people under their umbrella who will insure anything. You know, I'm going I'm to get my right arm insured against loss because I'm a famous baseball pitcher, right? Okay, but I doubt, I doubt that even Lloyd's of London insurance companies would say, yes, we will insure cigars against fire loss when they're smoked. That would be an absurd proposition. Because that's what cigars do. They get smoked. And so they're trying, in the story, if you want to believe that this joke is actually true, is that the guy walked into a, an insurance agent and said, I want to insure these things against what I'm going to do with them. And the insurance agent said, sure, I'll take your premiums. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. Insurance companies will famously take premiums and just not pay claims. But I don't think they'd actually say, oh, you want to insure your cigars against you smoking them. But better yet, and here's the, here's the bigger problem, most insurance policies would not pay for your own intentional act causing the loss. Follow me along on this one, okay? So if you live in a home and the home burns down and you file a claim to the insurance company to go, my home burnt down, they'll go, oh, you're insured against fire. However, if the police come forward and go, hey, we got videotape of that guy burning his own house down. We're going to prosecute him for that. And they get prosecution on this. They prosecute you. And you get convicted. They don't have to pay that claim, most likely, because they can say it was an intentional act committed by the insured. Now, it's possible if there's a bank involved that that might play into it a little bit because the bank can say, we didn't do it. But let's talk about a person who owns their home free and clear. You own your home free and clear, but you put insurance on it against fire, and then you burn it down, and you file a claim on that. They don't have to pay that claim. No, no. Insurance is supposed to be against things that you can't control. If you could control them and make them pay, well, that goes out the window, and that's all about what insurance fraud is. So obviously, if the guy had gone to court and said, yes, I burned the cigars, and now I want to get paid for that, a court would laugh at him. But of course, the court didn't laugh at him because that would not make the joke funny. So this is a joke. It didn't happen, not in Charlotte, nor anywhere else. Charlotte's a beautiful town, by the way. I passed through it just the other day, going to South Carolina. I understand that Charlotte's North Carolina, but I've been pointing out that I went to Charlotte, then I went to South Carolina, Okay. I've been there many times. Beautiful place. Beautiful place. Many people consider it to be the cradle of NASCAR. If nothing else, it's, it's ground zero. It's the epicenter of NASCAR. Charlotte. Okay? Didn't happen. This did not happen. It is a joke. Now, if people go, but Steve, it's still funny. Well, it's, I, I, I guess it is kind of humorous because it does show you how you can argue both sides of something and, and come to a kind of goofy conclusion. But the, the dumb part about this is is that it's been presented as a true story. And for some odd reason, it is currently going around the internet like a dog chasing its own tail 
uh, in, in fast motion. And it's, it's been bugging me because I, I've gotten probably a dozen emails today, got a dozen yesterday, and I'll probably get a dozen more tomorrow from people going, Steve, have you seen this? Have you seen this? Have you seen this? Yeah, I heard the joke 30 years ago and thought, well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a small chuckle, but it doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense. So I understand as a joke as a joke, I get why people would tell this joke. I understand that. But when people take a joke and mistake it as true, that to me is a problem. Okay, so I'm sorry if, if, if this takes the wind out of your sails today and you are bummed out learning that this is in fact a joke. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you have to understand that when someone tells you a story and goes, this is true, you should actually step back and go, really? Is that true? Or is that just one of those urban legends? Is that one of those urban legends? And of course, this entire joke has the feeling of an urban legend to it. If you don't know what an urban legend is, an urban legend is a story where somebody tells you a friend of a friend of theirs had something crazy happen to them. And then someone else will come along a year later and say it happened to a friend of a friend of theirs. And they're always kind of outlandish, bizarre stories that are kind of funny, but uh, obviously are not actually true. There's a guy named Jan Brunvan who wrote a bunch of books, including The Vanishing Hitchhiker and a book called The Encyclopedia of Urban Legends. And he's a professor. And he actually started collecting urban legends a long, long time ago. And he investigates if there's any truth to them. And uh, in the Encyclopedia of Urban Legends, he has the lawyer cigar story in there. So Jan Harold Brunvand uh, is one of my heroes. Uh, I've got many of his books. And if he lists it as an urban legend, I am convinced it is, in fact, an urban legend at best. But like I said, I think it actually started out as just kind of a goofy joke. But somehow, it's being passed around now as a true story. If you find it funny, laugh all you want, but please don't pass it along. Go, hey, it's a true story about this attorney who went to jail for two years <laughs> for smoking his own cigars. Uh, it's idiotic. So there you go. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Inside every cynical person, there's a disappointed idealist.